Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that focuses the light of truth on vital issues in today's headlines that impact every American. I'm your host, Lori Cardoza Moore, founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and I'm here to educate, motivate, and activate you to action. I want to arm you with the truth and the facts you'll need to fight and preserve our constitutional republic and uphold the Judeo-Christian values our nation was founded upon. Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a PJTN podcast where we shine the light of biblical truth on vital issues from today's headlines that impact every American, Jewish and Christian, people of faith and people of conscience. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore. If you missed the last episode of this podcast, you will find it and our previous podcast lineup on our website at pjtn.org, as well as all the other platforms that you use to access your favorite podcasts. On this week's podcast, I have invited Beverly Newman back to the show. We are going to discuss the Holocaust, revisionism, and the rise of anti-Semitism, especially in light of the mass atrocities the war that has been perpetrated by these by Hamas, by these Islamists against the state of Israel and our Jewish brethren. I also want to remind you that it is important for you to listen and share this with all of your and all of our previous podcasts with your family and friends so that they can become more informed about this and other related issues that threaten our republic and the state of Israel. So please remember to like and share. Beverly, welcome back to PJTN's Proclaiming Justice podcast. Thank you, Lori. I'm always happy to be able to contribute to better understanding of what we are all facing, Christians and Jews, in today's world. Yes, absolutely. And as we're watching the news, many of us have been glued to our TVs over the last week, um, you know, watching and listening to other podcasts to try to get a better understanding of what is happening. And Beverly, I don't think you're surprised by what's happening out there. You've been fighting Um, the whole issue of Holocaust revisionism for a long time. And you've been, you have been sounding the alarm to people across this country and really around the world with the the reach that you have to alert people to what is coming to the United States. And now here we are, we're all watching on the world stage, what anti-Semitism does to a society, to a people. And now we're seeing people, innocent people, men, women, children, butchered in the streets. Beverly, what are your thoughts about what's happening in Israel? Let's just start there. I have been alerting endless numbers of people for literally over a decade, even more than that, about where we are today and where we're going. And for those of us who do actually read, God's word, I invite you and urge you and beg you to read Ezekiel. That book of the Bible really is so in tune, obviously millennia ahead of now, with what is happening today. So today is the absolute biblical, historical, and logical consequence of a world way, way astray. And if we understand where we're supposed to be, we need to get in line with God's word. I can't tell you as a Jew how much anti-Semitism I have experienced over the past years, and I would say since 2008 especially, in Florida, and it's relentless. And Beverly, forgive me for interrupting, but I think this is an important point to bring up. 
you are the child of a Holocaust survivor. We are a Holocaust survivor family. That is true. And there is deep-seated, today, relentless anti-Semitism by people that you would never identify as haters, Mm -hmm. but they are. And it was the same, Lori, the exact same in Nazi Germany, where my poor father was born and raised and persecuted and enslaved for seven years, seven years by the Nazis. Mm. So what we understand today is the bedrock of how socialism attacks Jews. And we're talking socialism because the Nazis were the National Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. And who are the people that we see now Mm. in the forefront of what is going on worldwide against the Jews Mm -hmm. in demonstrations and protests and violent attacks and even murders? Who are those people? They are adherents to socialism. Mm -hmm. And many of them don't even understand the historical context and track record of socialism, Mm -hmm. which of course is the bedrock of communism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing, Beverly, this movement of socialists who are uniting with Islamists, just like what we saw with al-Husseini and with Adolf Hitler. Absolutely. Tell us about the history of that relationship and how that plays into what we're witnessing unfold today in Israel. It is very well documented that, for instance, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was closely aligned and supportive of Adolf Hitler. So there is a very, very long history of Jew hatred amongst the Nazis, amongst some of the Arab peoples, including the leader of Jerusalem during the Holocaust. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. The whole situation in Europe, in the Mideast, in Northern Africa, and throughout South America, etc., filled with Jew haters, mm-hmm. even to today. Mm-hmm. We, we have Jews living in dire circumstances today, worldwide, knowing that the hatred is embedded and brewing. Mm -hmm. And what happened in World War II, 50, 60 million, the estimates are still coming in, but at least 50 million people worldwide died for the sake of Jew hatred. Mm. Now, what have we learned? Mm. Nothing. I mean, Absolutely nothing. When we look at beautiful young women who are screaming their brains out on international TV about there were no massacres Mm -hmm. just a few days ago, Mm -hmm. what have we learned? These beautiful young women and strong young men and all kinds of ages in between and descriptions in between Mm -hmm. are educated in a system that does not tell them the truth, that act 
actively, intentionally lies to them. Mm -hmm. And to say that this, these massacres in Israel did not happen, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. absolute denial. So Holocaust revisionism is Holocaust denial, mm -hmm. which is historical, factual, evidentiary denial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about denial. And the term that I use that I think most appropriately defines mm -hmm. where we're at is Jewish genocide. Mm -hmm. This is not militants. This is not terrorists. These are people who are devoted to a cause of annihilating every Jew on planet mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. And let's not mistake that. And it's not just the Jews, although we are definitely the primary target, but there were not 50 million Jews on planet Earth That's right. in the 1930s and mm -hmm. 40s. That 50 mm -hmm. million figure includes the Jews, mm -hmm. 6 million, and 44 million other people who died for the sake of Jew mm -hmm. hatred. Right. You know, there's a scripture in the book of Obadiah, and I'm so glad you bring up Ezekiel, because we're going to talk a little bit in our closing statement about the role of the watchman that is talked about in the book, book of Ezekiel. But in the book of Obadiah, God told the prophet in the last days he was going to wipe out the descendants of Edom because they stood by while their brother Jacob was held in captivity and they did nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot sit by. Just like Beverly was talking about, 50 million people died. They weren't all Jews. God is watching what we do at this point in history. We have heard it said over and over since the Holocaust, since the, the, the camps were liberated, we have heard it said that, um, you know, that we have to speak up. It's never again. We can't let it happen. We'll never again is now. Never again is happening on our watch. And we cannot be silent, ladies and gentlemen, because these people are coming after. They've made it very clear, these Islamists, and we've been saying this for, you know, for the last over a decade, two decades now since PJTN has been around, that they're coming for, and they've made it very clear, they're coming for the Saturday people, the Jews, and the Sunday people, the Christians. They also refer to us as the pigs and the apes. They refer to us as the great Satan and the little Satan. We will be judged for what we do and what we didn't do. Look at what happened to Germany. Because Germans, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, Germany at the time that Hitler rose to power was a Judeo-Christian nation. It was a nation with Jews who were practicing their faith, and it was a nation of Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, who were, who were practicing their faith. But what happened when our Jewish brethren were crying out for us to rise up for the church, even the story of Sing a Little Louder, of the train every Sunday that would go past a little church in the countryside, and cry out to the, the people, the Christians sitting in the pews to help them. So much so that it became a, 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 um, uh, a, a problem for the pastor who was trying to preach his sermon. That he changed the time of when the people would sing their hymns to Almighty God and drown out the cries of our Jewish brethren. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot let it happen again. We must speak up. We will be held accountable. Do not think that you will get, you'll get out of this unscathed because they have made it very clear. There are several people who have said this is coming to a community near us. This is coming to the United States, ladies and gentlemen. And I have, I've 
when I watched all of these events unfolding last Sunday on the news, I said to my husband, this is coming here. This is going to be in the United States of America. We better nip it in the bud right now and send a message to these terrorists that we will not tolerate that in Israel. We won't tolerate it in the United States, and we won't tolerate it in other Western countries. I agree entirely that we're bystanders. America was largely bystanders or oppositional to helping the Jews in the Holocaust. My own family was still alive in 1943. And there was all kinds of activity in the Congress to try to save Jewish children, to try to save Jewish adults. And the Congress would not save them, would not save them. Mm -hmm. The FDR administration refuses to save them. So where did we go from there? We went to how many, many, many of our Americans lost their lives, their limbs, Mm -hmm. their mental health, their marriages, because they had to go to war when that part of world history could have been stopped, could have been prevented. We need to speak out and we need to demonstrate and we need Mm -hmm. to write letters and articles, et cetera. My latest poster is called Genocide Again. Mm. genocide again. This is not never again, folks. This is genocide again, and the genocide, I'm sorry, includes Americans. Mm -hmm. They they hate Mm -hmm. us. You know, you, you have to reconcile yourself to the truth. It doesn't do you any good. And we all want to lie to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to lie to ourselves. We want to say, it's not really that bad. It's not really hitting home. Or it's not going to happen here. It's not going to happen in my community. Right. Right. And that's what people are saying in mass. Mm -hmm. And, And I'm sorry, but we're lying to ourselves. Because the genocide again is not just for the Jews. And that would be horrific Mm -hmm. beyond imagination. Mm -hmm. And and I want to go back to what you said, Lori, about God is watching. There is Mm -hmm. a place in the Bible in which God is saying essentially, and I'm not quoting it, but I'm paraphrasing it, what else can I do? Mm. And th- there were four levels of people that had turned their backs on God Almighty. Mm. And that was the turning point to captivity for mm-hmm. the people. It was the elders. The elders had turned their backs on God Almighty. And we certainly see that. It was even the priests. There were 25 priests, including the high priest, Mm -hmm. who were worshiping the sun inside of the holy Mm -hmm. temple. Mm -hmm. So the Mm -hmm. the clergy, the elders, it was the women. And we see the women are in the forefront of this hate movement. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that, because obviously I am a woman, you are a woman, Mm -hmm. we are programmed by God to be maternal, to be the the source of kindness and reason and love, not to be overcome 
with hatred and vitriol. Mm -hmm. And yet you see them screaming and screaming and screaming on their interviews mm -hmm. about hating, hating, hating mm -hmm. Jews and Israel, which for them is one and the same. Yes. And then the, the fourth category, besides the priests, besides the elders, besides the, besides the women, just the common ordinary people. When God saw that four categories or four groups of his children had turned their backs on him, mm -hmm. he essentially said, what else can I do? Yeah. yeah. And that, that's where we are. That is exactly where we are. And we need to repent. We need yes. to turn situation around. Amen. Amen. Beverly, you hit the nail on the head and and it is about repentance, ladies and gentlemen, because as we're watching what's happening, there is no way out of this apart from God. We have to get on our faces and we each need to repent of our own sin and then we need to cry out to Almighty God for mercy and ask him, what can I do? What is my role to play? Because God put us on this planet for such a time as this. You're listening to this podcast for such a time as this. And if we don't speak up, ladies and gentlemen, who will? Wasn't it Martin Niemöller Beverly who talked about he was a trade unionist or he was he, he they the Nazis came after the trade unionist and because he wasn't a trade unionist he didn't speak up, and then they came after um, uh, what what was the next group of people, and then they came up, came, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't whoever it was that they were targeting next, and then they came for the Jew, and I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't speak up, and then they came for me, and there was no one to speak up on my behalf. This is where. We are, ladies and gentlemen, and the only way, again, that this is going to turn around is if we cry out to Almighty God. Beverly, I so appreciate your passion and for reminding us of the prophets, the word of the, the words of the prophets. In closing, are there any final comments that you would like to share with our audience about why it's important that we get involved, why we have to take back local control of our children's education, why we have to stand up, we have to contact our elected officials and demand that they do what is just and what is right and what is good, that they stand with Israel, that we protect our Jewish brethren, not just in the United States, but right now in Israel when they, really, when they need us to stand with them. I think, and I know personally, that there are daily incidents amongst all of us of anti-Semitism, daily. It's in the courts, it's in law enforcement, it's in your neighborhood association, it is pervasive and no one speaks out except sometimes the targeted family. We have that situation going on now for decades. My father, a Holocaust survivor, seven years as a Jewish slave, mm. seven years in 52 below zero weather, mm. working outside with virtually no food, with virtually no clothing, and he still, at the end of his life, believed in God, mm -hmm. believed in God. He would walk for dozens of miles in the snow, in the, in the blowing wind to his work duty and then walk back. And he would be praying to God. And we need to be praying and praying and praying for forgiveness 
Mm. We are God's children. Mm. And if you've ever had a child who has gone astray, can you imagine what this is when God says, I called and no one answered? Mm. And this is where mm. we're at. And we shouldn't just pray to him yes. for when we need him, which of course we always need him. But when we're in total crisis, we mm. should thank him. Those of us who are listening to this right now have inestimable blessings and we don't thank God. We don't appreciate what he's done. We don't want him to be in the position mm -hmm. where every category of his children have been turning their backs against mm -hmm. him. We don't want to be there. Yes, now, no. I, I, for such a time as this, a couple of years ago, God put it on my heart to write an entire series, kindergarten through 12th grade and even adult level, um, of Holocaust education books, and the title of which is Holocaust Babies. I don't think there could be a mm. more appropriate message that yes. we need to be giving to our children now. Mm. Babies, babies decapitated and burned alive. Yes. God help us. Just last week. And there are actually Americans by the thousands, at least, who are denying that this happened. <laughs> what do we <laughs> think that, that life is a joke book? No, life is <laughs> not a joke book. The Bible is not a joke book. We are dealing with evil. And for the first time in their lives as Americans, many of us are realizing that there is evil in the world. <laughs> there is absolute evil in the world and we have to be <laughs> vociferously against it yes. there, there is no side here that maybe there's a justification since when is there ever a justification mm -mm. to harm a baby god help and, us but, but see that is the message, genocide again, when you kill babies, when you slaughter them, when you butcher them, when you torment them, that is genocide again. Hmm. Because they are the future generation and it is the aim of the Jew haters to end that future generation and every generation as well. Yeah. I, I urge you, please, take a look at Holocaust Babies. You, it's on sale worldwide. And the message is very, very, very clear. Beverly, where, where can they find those books? Where can they order them? Especially if you are a teacher who is listening, if you're a homeschool mom, even if your kids are in the public school system, these you should order these books, sit and read them with your children. Have a conversation, a discussion about what you're learning in these books. Beverly, how can our audience find this series of educational K-12 through materials about the Holocaust? Well, if you look on the internet, Holocaust Babies, Beverly Newman, uh, you'll see bookstores and outlets worldwide to be able to get them. Uh, one of my friends in Florida saw them at a Walmart. So they are available. And if they're not available on the shelf, you just ask your local bookstore to get them in and, and impress upon your school board 
-hmm. and your representatives and your governor that we need to be putting in the hands of our children something that they can learn the value of human life starting mm -hmm. with our babies. Holocaust mm -hmm. babies is a true story. It is mm -hmm. the true story of mm -hmm. uh, my dad's niece who was born against all odds in a Holocaust concentration camp mm. by a mother and father who adored her. She was born against all odds because she could have been murdered right then and God mm -hmm. saved her life. And mm. they transferred the family to Sobibor death camp where mom, dad, and baby were all gassed to death. Mm. She was one month old. Mm. Bianca Louise Fleeshower. Mm. Bianca Louise Fleeshower and her parents, Ermgard and Louis Fleeshower, all murdered simultaneously in the gas mm. chamber. And our family did not know this until 60 years later, six zero wow. years later because even scores of years later these mm. records were not being released they were mm. still lying to the people and covering up these unspeakable mm. crimes mm. against humanity so mm. i i ask you please put real history in the hands of your your children and let them learn the truth, the uh, book that I've written, Curious George Holocaust Miracle Monkey, is um, a true story about that little character that our children grow up loving. Well, Curious George is a Jew. And I, mm. I, I say mm. that whimsically in the sense that obviously he's a cartoon character, but his creators his cartoonists were saved by Curious George's little face. And I've mm. written a delightful read aloud rhyming book of, about Curious George, which is true and how mm. he saved the lives of his Jewish cartoonists as they were fleeing the Nazis. Mm. So there, there's a world of truth out there that our need to know they need to be equipped for this world and i can tell you right now as someone who has spent her lifetime teaching children i can tell you right now our children are not being prepared That's for right. the the reality of this world they live mm -hmm. in a fantasy world in which you are liked or disliked or or whatever on a screen. No, 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 no. That's yeah. not reality. Well, ladies and gent, Beverly, one of the things I want to emphasize too, for those of you who are listening, if you order the books with all the problems that we're having with the school libraries and the porno pornographic anti-Semitic content that our children have access to, you can buy, purchase these books and then donate them to your local school library. And Beverly, there the, you have books for K through 12, correct? Yes. And Lori, if, if you could put on your website a link uh, to order these, that might be helpful for them as well. But our children need these true stories. This is not fiction. The, mm -hmm. the Many of the books that we give to children about the Holocaust are fiction. And I'm not discounting their worth. I'm just saying our kids need reality. Yes. And yes. there are stories in my books that you couldn't even make up. Like my aunt, who was a little, slight, frail, 
teenage girl dragged through the snow and ice with the Nazis right next to her, 30 miles, her friend on a makeshift sled in order to save her friend's life. Now mm. that's what we call friendship, mm. not like or dislike on a, a computer screen. Or a person's, or the color of a person's skin. Right. Which is part of the, the whole CRT, you know, movement that is happening. Well, Beverly, I want to thank you in, in closing again, ladies and gentlemen, Beverly, can you reiterate where they can go on the internet to access? And yes, we're going to, we'll get the link and we'll put it on our store page at pjtn.org for our audience. But um, Beverly, your closing statements for me, please. My closing statement is that our children need us to be proactive nonstop, proactive nonstop to save them from facing a world that they simply cannot comprehend at all without some basic information. It's like a puzzle, a, a 1500 piece puzzle, and you don't have the picture in front of you. Mm -hmm. What does that do? You don't have a clue how to put together that puzzle. <coughs> now, if you want to order directly from the publisher instead of, um, for instance, Walmart or uh, the, the different bookstores all over the world, the publisher is First Edition Design, and their website is www.firsteditiondesignpublishing.com. First Edition Design Publishing .com, and they can give you whatever you want. But I think Lori's idea of donating these books is really a very good idea. And I can tell you right now as an author, I have yet to see one cent from the, the sales of the book. So this is not financially beneficial to me. What this is, is beneficial to your children. We have to equip our children now, not tomorrow, now to be able to make decisions. Ask yourself, would you have had the strength to decide you would risk your own life for your best friend who was deathly ill, <clears throat> drag her 30 miles through the ice and snow with the Nazi armed officers right next to you mm -hmm. who would shoot you on sight, leave you in the snow if you stopped. You mm -hmm. had to go through the ice and the snow, mm -hmm. dragging another human being. And do you know, the good part of that story is, and I know your children will love this, and it's true, is that both my Aunt Ruth Jaffe and her friend Hannah Rath became best friends or, well, they were best friends, and they stayed best friends throughout their lives into their 90s. So mm. it's, mm. It, it, it's really a, a beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, true story of human compassion and strength, courage, and faith in God. Mm. And all need compassion, strength, courage, and most of all, faith in God because he's the one who is our only protector. That's right. That's right. Beverly, thank you so much. And um, Beverly, if you wouldn't mind just emailing me the link that takes us directly to, I went to the website, um, but if you can send me the link that takes us directly to the book, we can get that link put up on PJTN store page so that you all can go to pjtn.org and order a copy 
of any of her great books. Um, remember, K through 12. And for anyone listening to the show, if you want to purchase in bulk and then distribute these books as a gift to your local school library, they will take donated books, ladies and gentlemen. This is a way that we can counter the disinformation that our children are being subjected to in K through 12 classrooms. And I hope you all found this program informative and enlightening. This is a conversation that must happen, and we 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 will post this podcast on our website and all of our podcast platforms so that you can share this with your family and friends. As PJTN Watchmen, we have a biblical mandate to stand against the ungodly rising Marxist threat that is destroying this nation and other Western nations, threatening our Judeo-Christian values and promoting anti-Semitism, Jew hatred. We cannot remain silent, ladies and gentlemen. God warned the prophet Ezekiel about the responsibility, the duty of the watchman. And the the responsibility of the watchman is when you see the enemy advancing, you are to warn the inhabitants of the city so that no innocent blood is shed. Because if innocent blood is shed because you didn't warn the people, then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be held responsible. We're held accountable. As Watchmen, you can sound the alarm. You can warn others just by simply sharing this podcast with your family and friends. So please share and like to help sound the alarm in your community. Remember, Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminded us that silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. So don't forget to join us for our next week's podcast as we continue this conversation about combating the rise of anti-Semitism and taking back local control of our communities and our children's education. I want to also remind you that if you have not signed up to become a PJTN Watchman, you can help support this mission through our award-winning documentaries and Focus on Israel programs, as well as more programs just like this for just $20 a month. So go to our website at pjtn.org to watch our programs and listen to our podcasts. With your generous monthly donation, you can ensure that PJTN remains on the front lines and in the headlines, but we can't do it without your faithful prayers and financial support. I hope that you will prayerfully consider supporting our mission as we educate to activate Jews, Christians, and all people of conscience to stand on the front lines of this all-encompassing war. God bless you and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren, the state of Israel, and these United States. Thank you again for joining me on this edition of Proclaiming Justice. Please share this podcast with your family and friends. For more information about how you can get involved, please visit our website at pjtn.org. As a PJTN Watchman, you can help us keep up the fight to preserve our freedom for our children and their children for such a time as this.